Hey everybody, we're back. It's the same channel, but a new car. And we have a lot to talk about. Hey, smash the like button. Thank you. If you buy a Tesla and you live in California, it may not seem like you're an early adopter. There's already lines at the supercharger. There's tax credits galore, if you do your homework, of course. And electric vehicles are just a thing that's been around for a while. But I live in West Virginia, and in my state, I'm an early adopter. Three simple facts prove this. We don't have any Electrify America. We don't have any EVgo. And the only DC fast charger we have access to is Tesla. Those three facts alone made my decision for me about which car to get when I decided to go full electric. No supercharger equals no long trip, period. So we got online and got very lucky. We snagged up one of the new LFP Model 3s just as they were being released in the existing inventory. Our total wait time for delivery was two weeks, and that was September of this year. I think you're looking at April, May, maybe? at the time of this recording for a Model 3 Standard Range Plus. So I do consider myself very lucky. But you may already know all of this, and we're here to find out how my Model 3's been driving, and I can't wait to let you know. Today we'll go over cost to charge, the user interface and its learning curve, home charging solutions, quirky encounters, an in-depth review from my wife, who is the primary driver of the car, and I'll answer some of your questions as well. Cost to charge is pretty objective, so we'll start there. My wife is the primary driver of our Model 3, and there's a good reason she got the first Tesla in the family. Her job requires her to drive all day in her personal vehicle. As per most jobs of this type, she's reimbursed based on the number of miles that she travels. But we're going to ignore her reimbursement and just look at the cost. And your main takeaway from all that should just be she drives a lot. We have saved so much money. I used to fill up at the pumps for about $30 every four days. That would be eight fill-ups per month at a cost of $240 per month. It now costs just $30 a month. That's a huge savings. The mileage is about the same, if not a little more, than what it was in my gas car, so I don't even get range anxiety. Her previous car was a Honda Civic 2019, and before that she had a 2016 Honda Civic. Well, we now have a full billing cycle from our power company describing the amount of electricity we've used and been able to compare that to a month before we had the Model 3. Disclaimer, this is all technically back of the napkin math and your results will definitely vary. The difference is about 30 bucks. So one $38 electric bill and one $71 electric bill. So from that, back of the napkin, we can take away that the Tesla cost about $30 for the first full month that we owned it, making the Tesla Model 3 eight times more efficient than a comparable Honda Civic. So the user interface on the Model 3 is drastically different from any other type of car, unless you're talking about another Tesla. So let's get into the things I had to look up to get my Tesla to work how I needed it to work. I figured this was the most objective way to describe to you the difference between the user interface of a Tesla and that of any other car. These are things that I needed to find out and I didn't have the answer to, and I couldn't immediately find the answer within the car. Here's the list. Enable Sentry Mode. Safety and Security. Enable Sentry Mode. How to use Dark Mode. It's all under Display. First menu option. Log out of Spotify. Basically scroll all the way down. It's on the bottom right. Install Screen Protector. I made a whole video on how to do this on my Ease for EV channel. Link in the description. Lock the doors of the car from the screen while inside the car. Enable walk away lock mode. Display the camera in reverse after changing the settings in reverse 
while still remaining in reverse. Essentially, the camera went away when I was in reverse. How do I make it come back? How do I register my Tesla in my state? How do I set up Wi-Fi? How do I return my seating profile to mine as opposed to the other driver? How do I display my tire pressure? And finally, my favorite, where is the 12 volt cigarette lighter plug? These are questions my mom asked. What if you lose your phone? What if you lose your wallet? What if you lose your wallet and your phone? Do you have to go all the way to the service center just to get service done? That's 60 miles. So those were all the things that I had to look up because I didn't know how to use the Tesla interface. So really quickly, I just want to go into home charging. And we did need a level two solution because of the amount of driving that my wife does. And we chose this. This is the Neo Charge. And there's a very complex installation for it, but it just fits in your dryer plug. You don't have to put up all the screws and mounts, but if you want a really, really good looking and secure solution, all that hardware is contained within the box when you order a Neo Charge. It's right around $400 US, and it does the trick for your level two charging. I got a very long 50 foot extension cord I ran it through my ceiling and down into the garage to create a level two charging solution inside my garage for the Model 3. So all in between the adapters, the extension cord, and the Neo Charge, I'm out about $600 for a charging solution. But I do have level two NEMA 1030 charging available to me. And it runs 24 amp and takes about seven hours from very low charge to full state of charge. The best thing about the Neo Charge is that I didn't have to call the electrician, but I did have to buy the extra adapter, which was sold out at the time. So I bought an adapter on eBay for my NEMA 1030. I had to pay a pretty penny and a prime buck for that. In fact, it was a buck. It was $100 for the adapter because it was sold out. And the thing about Tesla accessories is they sell out, they come back in stock, but do they have them when you need them? You never know. All right, so quirky encounters, I'll just get right into it. The only quirky encounter that I had was also a discovery that I made about autopilot. I hit the accelerator pedal to go around a vehicle that was kind of giving me the treatment. You pass them and then they pass you and then you pass them and they pass you. So I decided I'd just get up ahead a little bit and kind of, you know, break the momentum of it. And uh, I hit the accelerator pedal with auto steer engaged, the autopilot, and I went over the allowed limit of 80 miles an hour and it disabled it for the rest of this drive. So no more autopilot for me, I've been punished. And for the remainder of this video, I'd like to turn it over to the primary driver of our Model 3 for a summary of things that she's experienced. Enjoy. No more worries about gasoline. I love every day having a full charge. I love the pickup it has right off the line. I love that there is no road noise. Everything about it is different. Seat heaters, computer screen. Love the choices on the computer screen, such as Spotify playlists. And it even has car karaoke. <laughs> I love that it has self-driving options. It is just such a relaxing and enjoyable experience. I love the leather seats. I love that it remembers your seat settings and that you don't turn the car on and off. And you just get out and walk away and it locks itself. I love the 24-hour surveillance cameras even when it is just sitting in a parking lot. It's always recording. The car notifies you if anyone even walks by it. Sentry mode is awesome. It has regenerative braking as well. I never have to fool with the headlights or even the wipers. The car does all of that for me. It is truly a smart car. There is hands down nothing I have ever driven that is anything like it, and being a car enthusiast myself, the Tesla sets the bar way above all the other gas-powered cars I have ever driven, including exotic cars. I truly love driving this car. The sound system is also amazing. We can even play video games in the car. 
from the parking lot. I love that the infrastructure is in place for Teslas compared to other EVs. I liked my Honda, but I love my Tesla. There is just really no comparison. It is responsive on turns. It is completely different experience when going down mountains. I love the one pedal driving. I love that when tailgaters get too close, I can just hit the pedal and create a huge gap between myself and the tailgater. To me, Tesla is the future, and I'm all about the future. Well, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you got any useful information out of this video and you think it's worth it, please give it a like. Also, subscribe to my channel for more information about what it's like to live in West Virginia with an electric vehicle. In fact, two coming soon. We'll cover anything you'd like. Ask any question in the comments. I'll try to answer everything I can. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time.